Persecutions, raids, scientific experiments, and torture are just some of the calamities to which homosexual men were subjected during the Third Reich. Nazism always considered them a problem for the Aryan race, and their methods to prevent contaminating the German lineage were as shocking and infamous as the treatment they gave to the Jewish community. In today's video, we're going to transport you to Nazi Germany in the mid-20th century so that you can get a close look at the brutal and despicable treatment that homosexual men received during this dark period of humanity. Welcome back to Military History, let's begin! Before the Nazis came to power in 1933, homosexual communities and networks flourished in Germany, especially in large cities. Despite same-sex relationships being criminalized, the Weimar Republic had been very open to these groups, allowing for their expansion and liberation. However, all of that changed with the onset of the Third Reich. The Nazi regime carried out a fierce campaign against male homosexuality and violently persecuted this community between 1933 and 1945. But then I think as Hitler got more and more afraid of international espionage, I think they felt the homosexuals were dangerous, but I think they also felt they should be gotten rid of because of this slogan about purifying German blood or German inheritance. Starting in 1933, the Nazi regime harassed and dismantled homosexual communities, and many men were arrested under the infamous paragraph 175. This article of the German Penal Code was a legal norm that was in effect from January 1, 1872, until June 11, 1994, and it penalized homosexual relationships between males with various punishments. In 1935, the Nazi regime intensified the content of this legislation, ushering in a nightmarish decade for the German gay community. Among other things, the maximum sentence was increased from six months to five years in prison, and the range of activities classified as punishable under the law was expanded. The revision provided the Nazi regime with the legal tools needed to pursue and prosecute men involved in homosexual behavior in much greater numbers than before. The new article also proposed sentences of one to ten years of forced labor in concentration camps for those who exhibited unnatural and lascivious attitudes. Under the new Nazi version of the statute, a wide range of intimate and sexual behaviors could be, and were, punished as criminal. Homosexuality was suppressed by the Third Reich because it was considered a sign of racial degeneration that could be transmitted, like a vice or genetically, from one individual to another. For this reason, they believed it had to be eradicated at its roots to prevent its spread among the population. Some events radicalized the campaign against gay men, leading to more direct oppression. The execution of Ernst Röhm, an assumed homosexual and Nazi commander, and 200 men from the SA, his paramilitary force, between June and July 1934, marked the beginning of violence unleashed against the community. While his death was motivated by other political issues, it also made it clear that no one was safe from condemnation and execution for their private lives, not even high-ranking Nazi officials. These killings changed the way newspapers and radio discussed homosexuality, as Rome and the other SA leaders were killed by direct order of Hitler. After this purge, Nazi propaganda used Rome's sexuality to help justify the killings. In doing so, they tapped into much of the German population's prejudice against same-sex relationships. The categorization of homosexual men as enemies of the regime came in 1936 when Heinrich Himmler, the leader of the SS and head of the German police, founded the Reich Central Office for the Combating of Homosexuality and Abortion. This office was part of the Kripo, the Nazi criminal police, and worked closely with the Gestapo, the Nazi political police. Notoriously homophobic, Himmler saw homosexuality and abortion as threats to the German birth rate and, therefore, to the destiny and perpetuation of the German people. That's why he began an intense and violent campaign to eradicate what he viewed as deviance. They called me pedal. Pedal it means like in German, schwul, in bad way. And therefore I was treated bad. If I were thief, if I were murder, they could accept me, but not this. 
From this point on, the regime focused less on closing gay gathering places and more on prioritizing the arrest of individual men for violating paragraph 175. According to the Nazi understanding, these men were homosexual criminals and, therefore, criminals and enemies of the state. Himmler believed that attacking these individuals was necessary for the protection, strengthening, and proliferation of the German people. The Kripo and Gestapo police forces carried out raids, investigations, and harsh methods of interrogation and torture to track and arrest suspected individuals. Police raids were public and high-profile displays in the Nazi campaign against homosexuality. The police would cordon off nightclubs and interrogate anyone who seemed suspicious. Those whom the police deemed guilty would be tried for violations of paragraph 175 or, in some cases, sent directly to a concentration camp. Through this method, the police intimidated and frightened both communities and individuals, while also gaining popularity through fear among the general population. The Kripo and Gestapo based most of their persecutions on public denunciations. They would then gather information about the private lives of the accused to uncover some form of homosexual crime. Fear was rampant, so neighbors, acquaintances, friends, or family members might point out a suspect solely out of paranoia. The language people used in their denunciations made it clear that much of German society agreed with the Nazi regime regarding homosexuality. The accused were described as effeminate, unmanly, sick, or perverted. Denunciations were an extremely effective tool of repression, resulting in tens of thousands of arrests and convictions. Once they were arrested, the Gestapo and Kripo would intensively interrogate the captured men. During these interrogations, which were always physically and psychologically brutal, the police aimed to obtain full confessions to secure maximum sentences. Under the pressure of extreme torture methods, the men were also forced to name their sexual partners, which helped the police identify other homosexuals for arrest and questioning. In this inhumane and perverse way, the Nazi regime captured thousands of people, establishing betrayal as a method of survival. Not all men arrested under paragraph 175 met the same fate. With the outbreak of World War II, those of military age were conscripted into the army against their will and forced to perform the most dangerous tasks on the battlefront. The Nazi judicial system also introduced castration as part of the sentences, so some imprisoned men could obtain early release if they volunteered for castration. Furthermore, some homosexual criminals were sentenced to prison, while others were sent to concentration camps for forced labor, though in both cases, they were punished and socially marginalized. The pink triangle was the piece of cloth sewed over, I think, the left breast, the way the yellow Star of David was sewed onto the clothing of every Jew. Who wore the pink triangle? The gay men. Between 5,000 and 15,000 men were imprisoned in concentration camps as homosexual criminals. This group of prisoners was required to wear a pink triangle on their camp uniforms as part of the classification system. The pink triangle drew attention to this captive population as a distinct group within the concentration camp system. According to many survivor accounts, pink triangle prisoners were among the most abused groups in the camps. They were sometimes assigned the most strenuous and demanding tasks in the labor system. They were often subject to physical and sexual abuse by both guards and fellow inmates. In some cases, they were publicly beaten and humiliated, sometimes as intimidation and other times for sheer entertainment. In the Buchenwald concentration camp, some pink triangle prisoners were subjected to inhuman medical experiments, as homosexuality was considered a hereditary malformation that needed to be cured. Dr. Karl Vernet, a Danish SS physician, claimed to be able to cure homosexuality through genetic experiments ranging from implanting artificial glands in prisoners to electroshock treatments or even lobotomies. Most of these experiments ended in the death of the prisoners. Homosexual behaviors were categorized as dangerous crimes against morality, so starting in November 1942, concentration camp commanders officially had the power to order the forced castration of homosexual prisoners. 
they wanted to know whether I had more soldiers, not only one. But I was very, very uh, ashamed, uh, young. I didn't uh, knew even the meaning of this word homosexual, for the, because our love was love, only love. The treatment was not good. It was not good thing. There was not tolerance. Uh, they treated uh, us, homosexual, as uh, something wrong. Discovering the stories of homosexual men during the Nazi era was difficult for much of the 20th century due to ongoing prejudices against homosexuality and the application of paragraph 175 in post-war Germany. In total, about 140,000 men were prosecuted under various versions of the article, but this number only corresponds to the official figures recorded by the Nazis. The true number of Jewish homosexual men killed in the Holocaust is unknown as most of them hid their true identities to avoid worsening their prisoner status. We're reaching the end of this presentation, and we wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on the atrocities that the Nazis subjected homosexual men to during that time? Please share your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, and we look forward to seeing you in future installments of Military History.